Hey everybody, this is Mervyn here from Solaire Intelligence. Um, I'm part of a company called Solaire Power Systems. We've installed many solar systems across the country. And we've noticed that a lot of people are not getting the most out of their solar plants. They're paying more for utilities than what they should, even though they've got this powerhouse of a plant that's sitting in their homes. So we created Solaire Intelligence, which is a, um, a piece of equipment that we're putting onto an inverter that's able to draw down live data from the inverter. We're able to use that data to create automations to make sure that it's working intelligently by switching off non-essential devices when they're not needed, by changing the state of charge situations of the battery, by allowing grid to charge or not allowing grid to charge when the times are correct. So I'm just going to give you a quick overview of how it works and what it looks like, and then we'll work from there. Right, so this is going to be what it looks like on your phone. This is the, this is the app that's running on iOS at the moment. And this is the home screen. And it just gives us, at a glance, the most of the information that we're going to need when we need it. At the top, it gives me a little bit of information about how much power we've produced during the day. It'll also tell me some nice little information or some facts about what the energy that you've made could have done. Then just below that, we've got the flow card. Just remember, this is all real-time live data. So this is as it's happening now. It's not subject to the cloud. It is local. In other words, this data is coming down directly. It changes immediately when things change. You can see it's just done it now. Just below that, we've got a couple of status bars which are important to know. So I've put things that we believe are going to be the most important for the proper management of your solar plant. It'll tell you whether Eskom is on or whether your grid is connected or not. It'll tell you the voltage of the grid. Just below that, it'll give me battery status. And these are the important numbers we need to know. Is my battery charging? Is my battery discharging? What is my state of charge? How long have I got at my current state of discharge or charge until the battery's either full or empty? And then a very important little bit is a solar forecast. Knowing how much solar power we are likely to generate tomorrow is really helpful in deciding what we're going to do with our appliances and what my state of charge needs to be before the day starts. And then just below that, a little bit more information just on how much energy I've produced today, what my RAND savings are based on the local tariff and what the lifetime saving of the plant is just to give us a real-time running, because that's ultimately what this is all about. This um, flow chart over here is a little interactive, so you can switch on and off major appliances. So I've got my geyser, my Quipon pump, and my heat pump from a pool connected over here if I would like to switch them on or off, depending on if, if automation is not doing quite what we'd like it to do. You can just tap it and you can toggle the uh, that particular appliance on and off, which is quite handy. Right, the next tab is going to be my smart loads. So we've taken all of the appliances that we know draw the most power out of your home and are the culprits for causing the most charges to you. To you. So a pool pump, pool heat pump, a borehole pump, I've got a geezer, a jacuzzi pump, and a koi pump. Now, if you notice underneath each of these, there's a, a little robot and they're telling you solar smart. What that does is we're taking information like solar um, power that we're busy making at the moment. We take things like your battery state of charge. We take whether or not grid is being used and we make smart decisions whether or not that appliance needs to run. So it's based on three things. It's based on grid import, it's based on solar state of charge, and it's based on solar production. And then it will start. So there's, there's timers on these as well. So these automations only happen within a specific time of the day. And we're flexible. We can do whatever we'd like to do. If at any point, let's say, for example, we know that we would like to heat the pool up and we're happy to pay a bit of grid power, all you need to do is you toggle the smart off you turn the heat pump on and immediately the pool is starting to heat. But you'll see now if I put the automation back on again, it will switch itself off now because at the moment it's cloudy and there's not enough power drawn from the sun in order to make this heat pump run. These things take a minute or so to operate, so I'm just going to force it off. And 
And then we've got a lighting control here. This is not essential to have. It's just a nice to have. It involves um, Wi-Fi switches put in behind the light switches and we can toggle the lights in our house on and off. We can also switch garden lights or for whatever lights we've added to it. It's it, it really, it's entirely up to each home. The next page, I've got my inverter information page. It's a repeat of the flow card. It's also interactive, but here we go a little bit more in depth. This is where the brains of the inverter system sits. Again, just a couple of status because I think it's really important that we know. But those settings that we have to go through menus on our um, SunSync apps or Daya apps or, or Solarman apps are accessible via this automation. And what we've done is we've brought in what we believe to be the most important items that need to be changed in order to get the maximum out of the system. Things like whether or not the system is going to prioritize the load over the battery charging. Or uh, if we're going to use the timer or if it can charge from the grid or if, we're, if we want to sell back to the grid if you're in a, pos if you're in a place that allows that. You can also change the amps for the charging of the grid charging from grid, I mean. And then just below that, we've got time slots and the, the visible states of charge. Now we've put that here because sometimes it's handy to be able to do it because we know that tomorrow is not going to be sunny. It'd be much better in the morning to have my battery sitting at a higher percentage. This also is automated. So the adaptive SOC control or adaptive state of charge control is programmed to have a look at what the weather pattern is doing tomorrow, predict how much sun is going to shine, and based on the size of your particular system, predict how much power is likely to be generated. And then adjust the state of charge accordingly. So for example, if tomorrow morning is going to be cloudy and rainy, we know we're not going to produce a lot it would probably be better if we're sitting with a higher state of charge by the time the morning rolls around, and then it will automatically adjust those state of charge values. So we'll draw a bit of grid overnight instead of drawing our batteries down. If the sun is going to be shining, we know we're going to have great production, then what it'll do, it'll allow the system to discharge the battery into the load overnight so we can maximize your saving. On this particular installation, we've got our water systems also incorporated, which is really nice. So we've got all the irrigation zones are here. We've got a water tank with a level indicator. We've got the borehole pump and um, its controls, which are all automated. They work when the tank is, is, is leveled down. It'll automatically switch the pump on. But what's really nice is we're able to prioritize when this pump runs. So on this particular installation, for example, the borehole pump will only come on when the battery charge is above 50%. It will also, every day at three o'clock, trigger a pump um, just to top the tanks up so that we know we've got enough water for the night so that the pump doesn't have to run through the night at all. So it's, it's really nice to have that extra layer of control. On this particular house, we've got a DAB smart pump and so all of that information has been pulled into here as well it gives me pressure flow rate amount of water that's flown and um, last month and this month and then right at the bottom is just a couple of toggles whether or not i'd like my irrigation system to be automatic or whether i'd like to keep it off last page i'm going to show you is just a little bit of solar stats so this particular plant is about two years old if you have a look at the bottom of the page, their lifetime performance, um, the, this, 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 particular has, this particular client has had um, about 87% of their energy usage has come from the solar plant. Since we've installed this automation system, if you look at the number just above that, you can see that 96% of the power in this home has come from solar, which I think is a, is a, significant, is a significant jump in, in, how much, in how much energy is being saved. And there's been no effect to the household. All of the things that need to run have run. The water stayed warm, the pool has stayed blue. It's just really a matter of making sure that we're optimizing whatever we're producing from the sun at all times. If this is something that interests you, if you'd like to hear 
what we can do for you. Um, I will put my email address and contact details in the description. You're welcome to get a hold of us and uh, we can have a chat and we can certainly make your solar system smart. Thank you.